Good morning, church. I'm going to say it again. Good morning, church. Happy Vision Sunday. Happy morning. Put your hands together like this.
that you've done. We thank you that you come alive in us. This morning, we are grateful. We are grateful for vision. We are grateful for expectation. We are grateful for all that you've already done, what we know that you're doing, and what we trust that you will do. Lift up your hands all over this building. Even by way of live stream today, we are in a new season, and God is doing something fresh in this house. And we thank you, Lord God, that where you are, there is liberty, there is freedom. Chains are broken. We thank you, God, that our hearts are drawn closer to you. And we just reach out to heaven, and we ask you to fall on us today. Holy Spirit, fill us up again. We thank you, God, that sometimes we have to see things in the spirit before they're manifested in the natural. And I thank you, it goes beyond what our natural eyes can see. Lord, I see victory. I see hope. Come on, just begin to, while you're right there with your eyes closed and your, your hands lifted high, just begin to declare what you see over your life. Come on, maybe you see prosperity. Maybe, maybe you see a, a marriage restored. Maybe you see finances being abundant. Maybe you see healing in your body. Maybe you see a loved one being saved that you've been believing for for a long time. Come on, speak that into existence right now. Speak that into the atmosphere. God, I see it. I see it today. Thank you, Lord. I see it.
want what you want. I want kingdom come. So let the way to heaven. Come on. Let the way to heaven.
Thank you for that in the atmosphere, church. God is doing something new in this place. The band and singers know <laughs> on any given Sunday, God can drop something in our hearts, something in my spirit. I'm so grateful for this team of people that are very flexible. When I woke up this morning as we were preparing this song about falling and asking the Holy Spirit to just fill us up. I thank you when he comes in and he fills us up and he falls on us and he lives in us and dwells inside of us. It's not just for us. We say it a lot, but it's not just for our own strength. It's for us to stand and to be strong and be representatives of who he is today. So this morning, I make a declaration that I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in all of the one who gave it all. I will stand my soul is now to you surrendered all I am is yours. You know it right, church. Let me hear you sing with all you got. Say it. Come on, fill the room with all. together to reaffirm the vision and even to launch new things. So uh, you are here, and, and I say this, I don't mean this in any kind of light way. You are here on a historic day. I just felt that when we were worshiping uh, just right over here, I thought, yeah, it's Super Bowl Sunday. Yeah, we're going to have a good time with that as well, too. But I really believe that this is going to be a day that we're going to mark on Now Church's history as this was a historic turning, shifting a new day. Do you believe this? You're here at a good time. You're at a very good time. We have a lot to pray for. We have some things going on, and obviously I'm representing Philadelphia here, but let me just challenge you first. If you are a Patriots fan, we are not dissing you, hating on you in any way. We are sure there's some good people on the Patriots team, but we know there's some good people on this team. Now, now listen. Now, we were just talking about this, but really, they're just, just all kidding aside, there have been some tremendous videos that have come out uh, this last week and just seeing several players, including our own Trey Burton, one of our, one of our distant, or uh, uh, he's, he's our extended, our extended member, our extended member, and we're excited that he's playing in his first Super Bowl today. That is a tremendous thing as a young man of God who is represented strong. 
The dude is the real deal when it comes to his life of faith. And we're just so pleased and so proud of what he's doing today. But we have seen these videos coming out, not only Trey, but other members of that team coming out talking about how much their faith is inspiring them, growing them, how, how they're just impassioned following Jesus. And you're seeing a move of God take place. There was a short time ago, there's a video put out where they were baptizing, members were baptizing other members that were rededicating their lives to Jesus. That's amazing. That is amazing. And, and here's the deal. When God is moving on that kind of platform, we need to pray for these guys because, because there are big moments, and this is a very big moment. Can you imagine being surrounded by that kind of atmosphere? And it's your moment, and then the camera zooms over on you, and you have that moment, that moment. We want to pray for them. We want to cover them. Not only, not only just Philadelphia, not only the Eagles, we want to pray for those on the Patriots. We believe that there is a moment that Jesus is going to be lifted up and magnified, and many, many, many people will see and hear. So we want to pray for them. Also, we're going to be praying for our pastor and Jason. He's going, they're going to be leaving this week. They're going to be preaching in England and Germany. So we're going to bless them and send them out. As they go, we go with them in faith. Amen? So let's pray right now. Father, we thank you. Lord, right now, Father, for our extended member, Trey Burton, first off, foremost, Lord, we pray that your anointing and your presence that has been on his life because he has boldly stood for you. Lord, we pray that your gift inside of him would come alive, that his inspiration would shine in this time, that you would shine through him. Father, we pray that, that he and every believing player today on either team, that they would play their very best and give you glory and give you honor today, Jesus. We pray that nothing would distract from the name of Jesus being lifted up in the midst of that time. Lord, let your name be lifted up and draw many, many, many people to you through this time and bless them. Lord, protect them from harm, from injury during that game in the name of Jesus. Bless their family, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. Give them great peace and encouragement in this time in Jesus' name. And Father, we pray for our pastor. We pray for Jason as they're being, as they're being launched out into England and Germany. Father, we pray that you would go with them to show them great favor, that they would have favor, favor all the way as they travel, that, that you would give the word of the Lord to our pastor, that he would speak that word to those churches that need it, a word, Lord, of refreshing, a word that would confirm their inheritance, a word that would speak to their spirit and lift them up and inspire them. And Father, we pray that you would bring them back safely as well. In Jesus' name, and we give you praise today for all you're doing. And now, church, Envision Sunday. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's celebrate him right now. Give him a good, good, good praise for Fresh Vision. Yeah. Awesome. We are so glad that you are here. As we have said before, listen, if you're coming in and you are newer to Now Church, we want to celebrate you. We don't want to put you on the spot, but we do want to challenge you with this. Even on Super Bowl Sunday, we're challenging you, giving you a three-week challenge. What is that all about? The whole point is if you come the first time, you need to come back a second time to get a little bit more of you. And a third time, maybe get a little bit more of you. Meet new people, other people as well, too. In the process of that time, we believe that God very well may speak to you about this is where you belong. This is where you need to let your roots grow deep. Don't just pass through now, church. Get a chance to connect with us. You might find that you raise your family right here. I did. It was a tremendous experience, right? So we're excited that you are here. Right now, I want you to celebrate everybody around you. Just go out of your way and welcome everybody with a nice handshake. Oh, oh, not a nice handshake. How about you just tap elbows? This is a flu bump. This is a fist bump for flu season. Show your love. Show your love. There you go. church what's happening happy vision sunday happy super bowl sunday i realized i was here
doing the encouragement last year on Super Bowl Sunday. So when I saw the schedule come out for us to come up here in December, I was like, Lord, if you could just make the Steelers be in the Super Bowl, but I, I promise I'll do right from now on. Obviously, he was not falling for that. But it's hard to root against Trey and some of these other guys who, you know, just, you know, putting the Lord on stage, that's, that's awesome. Um, and I, you know, wish them all the best. My youngest son, however, Simon, is a huge Patriots fan. If they lose, y'all be praying for him because he is going to be devastated. Okay? So anyway, um, we're moving into new seasons. Big things are happening. When, when that happens with us, what I like to do is I, I like to find a biblical example of the direction that I'm going in, right? So I can say, hey, Lord, you already did this for this person. You can do it for me. And I can remind myself and say, oh, God already did that. This, whatever I'm going through is not a big deal, right? So looking at the children of Israel when they're moving into the promised land, if you guys can put the scripture in for me. In Deuteronomy, the second chapter, the 24th verse, it says, Rise, take your journey, and cross over the river Arnon. Look, I have given into your hand Sihon the Amorite, king of Heshbon and his land, begin to possess it and engage him in battle. So look, it says, rise, because you got to get up and get ready to do something. Take your journey, because all of us have a call. All of us have something God intends for us to do. It says, look, see what God is doing. Imagine, daydream, ponder, consider what God can do in your life. And lastly, it says, engage him in battle. Because sometimes it's okay if you got to fight a little bit, right? You know, football game is going to be, it's going to be a battle. So if you add his direction to your obedience, verse 36 says, from Aror, which is on the bank of the river Arnon, and from the city that is in the ravine, as far as Gilead, there was not one city too strong for us. The Lord delivered, the Lord our God delivered all unto us. When we add our obedience to what God is doing, he says not one city was too strong for them. Not one city, not one obstacle, not one challenge, not one thing that happened in your path that you think you can't overcome. Not one thing will be too strong for you. And back then, you know, the children of Israel, they weren't an official nation yet. They weren't the Amalekites, and they weren't the Egyptians, and all the other people who had all the names, the city of Jericho with its giant walls. All they had back then was what you and I have. They have a God moving on their behalf according to and in response to their obedience to his word. So I encourage you today to take that first step of obedience with your tithe and offering this Sunday and every Sunday and see what God can do for you. Amen? Amen. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to sow on Vision Sunday. We ask for your blessing and favor on this seed. And we thank you that there is nothing, nothing too strong for us to overcome when we are with you and moving in obedience in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, ladies. A great way to kick off this new year is to get involved in a small group. You have the opportunity to do just that with this semester of Let's Do Lunch. There are 10 hostesses to choose from, and they will be available out in the buzz today to answer any questions you might have. Just select the group you'd like to be a part of. You'll meet once each month for food and fun. Don't miss this chance to connect with old friends and make some new ones. Hey guys, we haven't forgotten about you. We're also kicking off a new season of Men vs. Food. We have four groups meeting at different restaurants once per month. It's simple, dudes and food. Sign up today in the buzz. Okay, everybody, who's ready for a scavenger <laughs> He's a born showman. <laughs> What's up, fellas of Now Youth? Something incredible is coming up Sunday, February 18th to the 19th. It's our guys' camp out. Cost is $20, and that includes dinner, midnight snacks, breakfast, and more. We're going to have tons of fun with competitions, games, time to hang out, connect with each other, and mostly with God. If you're a middle or high school guy, sign up in the buzz today. You don't want to miss this. 
Can't wait to see you guys there. It's awesome. Camp out, here we come. For the last several years, it has been our joy to honor some of our everyday heroes in our community. From first responders and medical professionals to teachers, we want to express our gratitude and support. This is a Now Church Outreach scheduled around Valentine's Day each year that we call Love Week. Here's how you can be involved in this project. Make a batch of brownies or bake some of those delicious cookies and bring them with you to our Sunday morning services on February 11th. The Heart Smile team will assemble them into beautifully displayed gift baskets or trays. Then they'll be delivered to various locations throughout our city. We appreciate your help to make this a success and for being a part of showing some love during Love Week. All right, we want to add our welcome to Vision Sunday. It's great to be together. That song is a very special song to me. I love the Rocky movie, all the themes, uh, all the Rocky movies. And, and uh, that, uh, it, you know, that's from the city of brotherly love. So when, whenever I've gone to see Trey each season to see the Eagles play the last few years, it's just electric as they uh, begin uh, after the national anthem and that kind of thing. They start playing video of Rocky starting out and trying to run, and he can't run. He's tired, and he's running along. And then by the end of that song, as he's running up the Philadelphia Museum of Art, 72 steps, he's fit, he's ready, and he's the ultimate underdog. And I know that in your life, maybe you feel like the ultimate underdog sometimes. I know a lot of people aren't giving the Philadelphia Eagles much of a chance, but uh, I want to say to you, there's no New England in the Bible, but there is the Church of Philadelphia. <laughs> and there aren't too many patriots mentioned, but a lot of times we're called to mount up with, with wings like eagles. <laughs> anyway, shout out to Trey and to the family. Uh, they've been connecting with us online, and uh, hopefully we'll see them here in a few weeks uh, to come visit and to be with us and to meet your kids and, and that kind of thing. Uh, open your Bibles, if you will, to 2 Kings chapter 4. As we talk about the vision, I want to just share a little bit from the Word of God, a great story from 2 Kings chapter 4. I'm going to read from the message. It says this in verse 1. One day the wife of a man from the guild of prophets called out to Elisha, your servant, my husband, is dead. You well know what a good man he was, devoted to God. And now the man to whom he was in debt is on his way to collect by taking my two children as slaves. Elisha said, I wonder how I can be of help. Tell me, what do you have in your house? Nothing, she said. Well, I do have a little oil. Verse three, here's what you do, said Elisha. Go up and down the street and borrow jugs and bowls. The New King James says vessels from all your neighbors and not just a few, all you can get. Then come home, lock the door behind you. You and your sons pour oil into each container. When each is full, set it aside. So she did what he said, like what Norm said earlier, about our obedience to the unction of God. She did, what she, she did what he said. She locked the door behind her and her sons. As they brought the containers to her, she filled them. When all the jugs and bowls were full, she said to one of her sons, another jug, please. He said, that's it. There are no more jugs. Then the oil stopped. Oil doesn't stop till you don't have any more vessels to fill. She went and told the story to the man of God, and he said, go sell the oil, make good on your debts, live, both you and your sons, on what's left. Let's pray together one more time. Father, we love you. We thank you for your word. It is your word that saves us. It is your word that lives through us, and your promises, though heaven and earth may pass away. Your word will by no means ever fail. And we praise you for that everlasting word in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Our theme for this whole month of February is going to be go for the gold. We've got the Olympics coming up and all the things that are going to be on your television set with Winter Olympics. We've got three Winter Olympians from Ocala. I don't know if you know that. Then it's crazy, isn't it? We've got three Olympians from right here in Ocala, Florida that are out there in the Winter Olympics. And that just seems so crazy to be from hot Ocala. And yet there's speed skaters and, and all kinds of things out there. And we're just very, very blessed to be able to cheer them on. Uh, I want to talk about reaching for God's best this month. Our overarching scripture for 2016, in case you haven't been around the last few weeks, is Genesis 2, 7 through 15, where it simply says this, God made a garden, God put man into the garden, then God put four rivers into the garden for them to jump into, to nourish and grow, grow it. And, and, and then he pointed to the reward. He said, in that river, there's gold. Why would God point out the gold at the beginning? Because God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him and he always points out the reward when he's telling you the work. When he's showing you your job, when he's showing you the work, you know, the Bible says uh, that it's, the workman is worthy of his wage, that God knows when you're out there working hard and busting your butt to make a living and to make a, a living for your family and to provide a roof over people's heads and food on the table, God said you should be rewarded for that labor because that labor is you using your gifts, talents, and abilities to glorify God, to honor him. God wants you to live a life of discovery, an adventurous journey where you uncover who you are and why you're here. And that's a big part of it. The greatest joy of your life and the richest fulfillment are in your God purpose. Say amen. amen. Now, Vision Sunday is an annual celebration here. It's a celebration of progress. Uh, for all intents and purposes, it's our State of the Union address, State of the Church address, to be able to say our church is alive and well, strong, and moving forward. On May 1st, yeah, you ought to give it up for God because <clears throat> some of you, in the beginning days, we didn't know if we would last the first year. We'd, been, uh, we'd went through a lot after 10 months as a church where um, certain forces tried to split our church and divide us and, and make me and my wife just pack up and go home. And uh, we were thrilled to have our first anniversary. We were thrilled to have one year. And uh, we've taken it day by day, month by month, year by year ever since. And here we are coming up on the 28th anniversary of Now Church, and I can hardly believe it. In that 28 years, thousands, and that's not an exaggeration, Thousands of people have come onto this property, into this auditorium, and have experienced a life-changing touch from God. That's not an overstatement. But we believe that our best days are still ahead of us, not behind us. In order to keep doing that, you, know, you can't rest on what you've accomplished. You can't rest on what you've already done or what you've seen God do, and you can't romanticize the past so much that you never step into the future. You have to keep going and keep mustering the courage, the strength, and the energy to keep moving forward. Why are we still looking for the best days? Because we're not enthralled with our past as much as we are captivated by our future. That's what I believe the Lord is speaking to our hearts. Listen, too many people not just churches, but churches as well, stop at their peaks or valleys. They stop at the tough moments and just sit down and cry and feel sorry for themselves, or they can never break free from some glorious moment where something dynamic happened and they live there forever trying to recreate and relive that moment. That's how religion is created. Because religion is based on, listen, almost every denomination started with a visionary leader who spoke the word of the Lord and people began to hear. They had a fresh word from heaven and then they, 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 they moved into a truth that changed the world. 
But when the Spirit of God and the cloud by day and the fire by night moved on to the next revelation, it was passed off to an administrative person instead of a visionary leader and became a denomination. No, no, we don't need that new thing. We've already got what we need. If you've ever driven through Lancaster, Pennsylvania, or Amish country like I have, and you notice the people that aren't allowed to have watches or buttons or cars or any electronics, and they're still driving horse and buggy, their founder, that was a move of God, a genuine move of God in the 1820s and 1830s. But that became more than a domination. It became kind of bizarre in that people have camped out and almost 200 years later, people want to live in the 1820s and 1830s. I submit to you there are people in our own community <clears throat> that go to churches that still feel like the 1950s right here in Ocala. And God is calling us always to move forward. The Holy Spirit is, a, is, is forward. If you noticed uh, some of all of our now crew are in their nice new t-shirts today, those are all workers in the church that we're celebrating and thankful for their work. This, the, in our logo, is an arrow that's simply moving forward. It's just a subtle thing to show who we are. We can't camp out in the past. The good, the bad, or the ugly. The past is the past. The Bible says forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to the things that are ahead. Paul the Apostle said, if I can't do anything else, I'm going to reach forward to what God has promised me. I'm going to press for the mark of the high call of God in Christ Jesus. I want to say this to you. If you're stuck in a moment of time in the past where you failed, even if it was a huge failure, God loves you, cares for you, wants to meet you where you are and help you get over that moment into the present and into the future. Because God says in his word, Jeremiah 29, 11, many of you know it by heart, but it's that, that promise that God says, for I know the thoughts I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of your future. Thoughts of your peace. Shalom. To give you a hope. God is wanting you to take a step forward today. And whether you're here in the room or whether you're watching us on our online campus, this is a day to put one foot in front of the other and it's a day to move forward. Say amen. amen. <clears throat> in the text, we find a widow woman in a world of debt and in a world of desperation. There's nothing, there's nothing more desperate than feeling that your children are about to be taken from you in some way. Is there any worse feeling as a parent than your own children being captive, being taken, being enslaved? And that's where this woman was. Her husband is dead. He was a man of God who served God all of his life. And yet we find her in this place with the threat of her sons being sold into slavery and coming to the prophet Elisha and just crying out with nothing to lose. She reaches out to the man of God and says, help me, I am desperate. There's a lot of good news in this passage. Primarily, God cares. In her worst moment, God cares and the man of God cares and the family of God cares. If you're here today or you're struggling or you're broke or broken, there are people around here in this place that have been where you've been. There are people around this place that have been through something of what you've been through. Not everybody, but everybody's been through something. This is not a church for perfect people. This is not a church for religious people. This is a church for people on a journey that are just trying to take another step and wake up tomorrow morning and find the motivation to get up, to dust off, and to get up and move forward again. Every day is a step by faith. The Bible says we walk by faith, not by sight. I love that song we sang earlier, it's not about what I see, it's not about what I feel. I see what isn't seen yet. And I love what God is doing in this place. God cares. He cares about her condition and he cares about yours. 
Secondarily, God has a strategy to move you upward. God has a strategy <clears throat> to get you from where you are to where he wants you to be. God has a strategy for that. That's not just something, I'm not saying wishful thinking. I'm saying God has a plan and a purpose. He has goals. He has a, he has a, a way to get you up and moving again. Even if you've been beating yourself up, even if you even if you failed with the ultimate failure as you defined it, you're here and you're looking and you're open because God loves you and he is drawing you by his awesome love and by his awesome power to restoration. God sees you as a winner in this world, not a loser. Even if you're down right now, I challenge you to come up one step. I challenge you to come up one step. If you're surrendered to Jesus, then the Bible teaches this principle. There's a conqueror within you, not you trying to white knuckle it and just make it through or eke out an existence. There is a conqueror within you and his name is Jesus. And if you're surrendered to him, he'll fight for you. He will take you places that you've never been before, take you places you never thought you could possibly be. I, I don't want to talk about Trey too much today, but Trey Burton, for those of you that don't know, is a young man that at the University of Florida a few years ago connected with us through Pastor Lindsay when he was the chaplain for the Gators back in the, in the heyday. You wouldn't even say that. You, you can't believe that it's already so far in the rearview mirror. But back uh, 10 years ago, Pastor Lindsay was part of the national championship teams and, and part of the Tebow years. And this, we connected with many of those players on different levels, but one guy um, named Trey Burton came there and found himself in a situation where he needed God more than just he had in the youth group. He needed a deeper relationship, and that began to work in him. And uh, one day, he just contacted me in a moment of desperation and and uh, I, was, I had a day loaded with appointments, uh, and yet I just felt like he, he was just reaching out, and he didn't always do that, and he and his girlfriend at the time were reaching out, and, and uh, I just felt to go up and up to Gainesville and just forget those appointments that day, reschedule those, and just go up there. And in that day, we got on, on our knees together, the three of us, and prayed and cried out to God. And my wife and I began premarital counseling with them uh, during football season of, of that year. I don't remember what year it was. It's so long ago now. <clears throat> but, um, well, I do remember how long ago it was, actually, because uh, they married <clears throat> the end of that year. So it was 2012 uh, during football season. And right after football season was over, uh, they had their wedding right here in the hub on the other side of this building where our children's church is today on... December the 12th, uh, 2012, at 12, 12 in the afternoon. <laughs> and I said he was cheating right then because he was going to remember his anniversary when most men couldn't. And uh, so they've had five years, and they now have three kids in five years. And um, uh, some of you were here when we had Trey Burton night. He came to sign autographs. Uh, and to be with us in his last year of school and then just ask us to pray that he might get to try out for an NFL team after school. He wound up not drafted in the draft. And that was a real, we were all discouraged about that. We'd been praying for him through the combine, all that. And um, all of a sudden, um, they got a call at the end of the draft and was invited to training camp for the Philadelphia Eagles. And they gave him a chance, gave him a tryout. Uh, not many people, even the, on the drafted ones, made it into the pros. If they made it, they didn't make it for long. Trey made it all through the cuts, and in the final cut day of that next season of 2013 with the Eagles, he found out he was invited to stay on the team, not just practice squad, and be a full-time football player on special teams. And so Pastor Chris is wearing Trey's first number, number 47, and... Uh, and that was a year we were just so excited. And 
My family, if you don't know, my family, my parents are both from southern New Jersey. My parents and all of our people are from uh, eastern Pennsylvania and uh, southern New Jersey. And historically, my grandfathers and, and, and relatives have all been Philadelphia Eagles fans. So I couldn't have been more delighted. And I was blessed to be able to go up and be at a game, well, each year. But that first year, I was able to reconnect with a lot of family members uh, some that I'd never even met and some that uh, I just hadn't been connected with in, in, in many years of busy ministry. And through that time, uh, some of them are really reconnecting or connecting with Jesus in a real way. And it's just been this tremendous opportunity. Well, for Trey, this past year, they invited him to be third string tight end and play more offensive plays. And they, you know, his, his college number for the Gators was eight. So they gave him 88 and moved him up. And uh, so I had to get, uh, you know, in honor of my family, I had to get a New Jersey. <laughs> anyway. Eight is new beginning, so we're looking for that. Listen, God wants to fight for you just like he fought for Trey Burton's dream. And today for Trey to be in Minneapolis, I'm just praying he doesn't get the big head because now everybody's like, oh, you're in the Super Bowl. <clears throat> they're questioning, pardon me. They're, you know, they sat down and they interview all these guys. And I just believe that Trey's going to be the same humble guy that we know and love. And we're just really excited for his opportunity. But this may never be again where, where I have somebody that, that I love, that I know in a real way that's playing in the Super Bowl. So this is a big day for, for me. And uh, my sister reminded me that my grandfathers were, were Philadelphia Eagles fans too. So they would be very, very happy in heaven. And I'm very happy to, uh, to talk about this and, and talk about Trey's testimony and just what a man of God he has become in this time. You know, part of you finding victory in your life is finding the place where you look to be an influence. You look, look to be the influence that you are. And um, you never know who you're going to impact by canceling one appointment and just going and loving on somebody that you sense God's love is coming for. Step up, step up one step. You know, people aren't looking for a new religion, are they? We say around here that they're looking for a relationship which produces a lifestyle that works. And that's what they want. They want a winning life. They want, you know, everybody in every culture and every nation no matter their religious background or even if there is one, what I've found in my travels to 69 countries over those last 30 years is that many, even Hindus and Muslims and people are just genuinely looking to provide a home for their family and education for their kids and keep food on the table. They just want to win in life. You're already a winner because you were born in America. Whether you realize it or not, that just by being born in America, you won the lottery in, in terms of the, the rest of the world. The rest of the world, do uh, you know 80% of the world lives on an income of less than $25 a, a week? 80% of the world lives on an income of less than $25 a week. If you make more than $25 a week, and most of our youth even make that if they got a job, you are blessed and you are rich by the world standards. You ought to praise God for that. I want to give you three truths out of that passage that you must understand and pursue if you're going to understand the vision of now church and God's personal dream for your life. Three truths you've got to understand and you've got to pursue for yourself. Number one, the prophet Elisha said to the woman, the widow woman, what do you want me to do? Tell me what you already have in the house. Number one is this. You already have something no one else has. Your own life gift. Your own God purpose. You have something that nobody else has. You have something that nobody else in the whole world has. You have unique calling 
talents, giftings, and abilities that God gave you and assigned you that the Bible says he gave you before the foundations of the world. In Christ, he saw history ahead of time because God isn't, you know, he's timeless, right? He's the ancient of days. And so we know that God is timeless and he, he looked out of history, he looked out of eternity into time and he assigned you certain gifts, talents, and abilities that nobody else would have and in quite the same, the same conglomeration, the same mixture. You're unique, you're different, and you're powerful. The man of God asked, what do you have in the house? The widow replied, nothing. How many times in our lives have we gotten to the place where we feel we don't have anything to offer? We don't have anything for anybody else. We don't have enough energy for ourselves. We feel overwhelmed. We feel overworked. We feel undervalued and underappreciated. And that's where depression tries to take hold. But the man of God, his first miracle, he just said, tell me what you have. You have to look around your life, your house, your inventory of the way God made you and begin to value and appreciate, I've got something. My friends, you have something that nobody else has. Nobody is quite like you because of the way God made you. Nobody knew this widow would become an entrepreneur. Nobody knew this widow would have an oil business. Nobody knew this widow would be able to not only get out of debt, but live for the rest of her life on a comfortable income because of this miracle that came. And the miracle wasn't, right? The miracle wasn't, boom, you have, a, you have all the oil you want. You have a big tanker in the backyard. No, the miracle was take what you have and start pouring it out into others. And as long as you're pouring it into other people, other vessels, see, God sees people as vessels. You can be a vessel of honor, the Bible says in the New Testament, or a vessel of dishonor. As long as you're pouring your gift into other vessels, the oil will never stop. And you will be blessed to be a blessing. Say amen. amen. An entrepreneur is just a desperate person who discovers their life gift for themselves. Right now, no matter how you feel, you possess something valuable, a resource, a talent, an ability, an asset, a gift God gave you. Number two, someone else needs what you have. Whether you realize it or not, out of these walls, of this property, there's somebody else more broken than you are or more broke than you are. There's someone else that's in a desperate place that maybe you were in or maybe you touched, but God rescued you. Somebody else needs that life gift to be poured out from you unselfishly into them. The prophet says, go borrow vessels and start pouring the oil. Your life gift functions best when it's poured out for the benefit of others. Oil just runs out when it's consumed, but it multiplies when it flows. Our scripture this month, our scripture for this year about the rivers, that's about the flow. That's about a stream of things that are moving, 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 that's where the gold is. Go for the gold. Go for God's best. Where's the gold going to be? It's going to be in the river. It's going to be in the flow. If you just keep consuming, if you keep consuming, if you keep using, if you keep taking instead of receiving, and there's a difference. There's a difference between being a taker and being a receiver. Every giver has to be a good receiver first. Some of you are great at giving and you're lousy at receiving, so you never have much to give. So others of you are takers. You're just consumers. You just want everybody to give to you, give to you, give to you. You feel entitled. That's the stuff that stops the flow. That's the stuff that keeps you from the blessing and the fullness of God. The Bible says the generous man's life just keeps 
getting bigger and bigger. The, the world of the generous is bigger and bigger. The world of the stingy is smaller and smaller. Why? Because the stingy person just keeps getting consumed with themselves. It's about me. You don't understand. I can't give to you. I am needy. And what you say is what you get. If you just see yourself in need forever, then you're going to be in need forever. Selfish people get more tired out than generous people do. We say around here, life is a team sport. And this is about moving forward as a people and moving forward as a community because we're not just called to sit in these walls. We're called to be who God has called us to be and to be a light and an influence everywhere we go, but especially in the territory God has given us for an hour, <clears throat> pardon me, an hour in every direction from Gainesville down to the villages, from Crystal River to Daytona Beach, everywhere we have been, has been given to us, everywhere we walk, we walk by faith. And the Bible says, wherever the soles of your feet will tread, God has given it to you. Amen. There's an old African proverb that says this, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. The whole community needed what the widow had. And all she had was a little bit. Everybody needed oil. Oil was a mainstay. Remember I talked to you a couple weeks ago about Jacob, his first night away from home. I said he didn't have anything. You know what he had? He had one thing. He had a little bit of oil. He had to have oil in those days to cook, just to eat, just to have something to be able to, to, to do something with, to, 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 to anoint yourself, to keep refreshed. It was, it was the moisturizer of the day. It was the, it was the cooking of the day. It was everybody needed it. This, the whole community needed what that widow woman had, but they didn't know she had any until she started borrowing some vessels and getting the word out. Now, here's the thing. They needed it so much that they were willing to loan her the vessels and yet pay for the oil when it came back. There was a demand that God had placed a, a need and suddenly he gave the woman the supply of the very thing other people, the very things that other people needed. I want you to know in your life that people need what you have. Not only do you have something nobody else has, that, that people need that exact gifting, the way it's placed in your life. There are people beyond these walls that need that. And they're, they're desperate. They just don't know you have any. There are people everywhere waiting for you to activate the life gift within. Say amen. amen. Number three and last. Destiny is the awareness and the pursuit of your next steps. Destiny is the awareness and pursuit of your next steps. Patrick Quinn said this, your inner satisfaction, your ultimate fulfillment, your life purpose, your true happiness will never be fully unlocked until your unique gift and the world's unique gift unique need come together. Remember I said a long time ago, if you're looking for your purpose in life, you're looking for your gifting, it's at the intersection of, of what you do well, what you enjoy doing, and what the world needs. If you can find that in your life, you're gonna find not just a job, you're gonna find a calling. And you're gonna find a calling not just in the house of God, but out to the world around you. God's path for your life is on a collision course. There's going to be an intersection where your gift crashes into the world's need and that's where you'll truly begin to live your life. When you discover how to unlock that, those three simple promises, the gift, the need, and the journey to where they're coming together are the secret to opening your eyes to God's vision for your life within the vision of now church. They're the keys that will begin to unlock God's story in your life. They will transform an ordinary life into an extraordinary adventure. Now, as you came in today, you may have noticed a few things that are different. First of all, we've got that wonderful uh, balloon uh, uh, archway for you to come in. That's for you to take photos on your way out today if you want to take some pictures in your nice now crew shirts or with the people that are coming in. That's a, kind of a photo area right there as well. But we've got some things, some other things on the walls 
You know, the Bible says write the vision. Make it plain. A few weeks ago, on a Wednesday night, I asked the core people of Now Church who come for Bible study, um, what's the vision of Now Church? Why are we here? Why do we even exist? Because we, had a, we have a four-page vision God gave us from 28 years ago. <clears throat> don't expect anybody to remember that word for word. I don't even have that memorized. But a few years ago, we synthesized that down just to just a few specific and meaningful words. So if you look over here to your left, my right, that's the vision of Now Church. That's why we exist. And every word is important. Now Church, building a relevant, creative church, empowering people to reach others. Every one of those things is important, but I want to focus today on reaching others. You, you, you are to be empowered in your life. That's part of what I'm supposed to do. Part of what we're supposed to do with leaders is to empower you. The Bible says that you would strengthen people for the work of ministry. Ministry is not just what we do as pastors. Ministry is what we do as the body of Christ. Every Christian has a call of God on your life. And what we're trying to do in this place is be creative and relevant in the way we present those things. And Pastor Lindsay did a great job talking about the importance of relevance last week with his nephew. I thought that was very powerful. But I want to say this to you. You should leave here every Sunday. Our goal is that you leave here feeling empowered. And that just, not just empowered for yourself, but empowered to go love somebody that was unlovable Amen. or smile at somebody that was upset. These are the big things of life. You're not called to just keep building fun times with the people you have. Keep enlarging your circle of love Amen. because there's a whole lot of love in the body of Christ to go around beyond just us into people that haven't really received or experienced that love for themselves. Um, if you look to your right, <clears throat> this is a big thing right here. This is a big part. I'm just so, so thankful for our team that helped produce these things. This is the answer to providing a track for people to run on. Everybody needs a track to run on. How do I find my life purpose? Here it is. We call it 4D. It's a four-dimensional view. It's going to be four classes starting in March and going every, every week except the fifth week of the month. Uh, there will be a class at 5 o'clock in the hub at the other end of this building. 5 o'clock every Sunday, there will be a class. And people that are coming in, whether they're here for the first time, they don't have to start at class one week one, but they can. But they can start at class two, class three. These classes are going to help us to just communicate these basic things. The four Ds are this, decide, discover, develop, and deploy. Ultimately, God wants to take you from just knowing him through finding your purpose to growing in your freedom to making a difference with your life. And we want to simplify everything. We say a, a saying around here called simplify to strengthen. Sometimes things get so complicated so big, so much stuff going that we all get overwhelmed and we over-explain everything. So we've been working on this for the last two years to try to get something in a succinct fashion where we can have, we're going to have video presentations in this. I'll be speaking in some of it. Some of the other pastors will be speaking in some of it. But we're going to take people from the introduction, who is Jesus, and hopefully get them in four weeks. Now, sometimes it may take you, because of schedules and work, it might take you two months of coming to get the four classes in. But this is the way you can know the vision of the house, the way that you can get to know people in the house, the way you can join the church, the way you can be empowered to be part of the now crew, which is all of our workers, everybody that's doing. We had a meeting last week. Do you know, do you know it takes 160 volunteers to make this church go for what you see here? We have 160 volunteers. And man, we just want to honor you guys this place wouldn't be what it is without you because you've caught the fact that ministry is not just something pastors do, but it's something we all do together and we're empowered to do. So yeah, give it up for our now crew. Tremendous. If I wasn't representing for the Super Bowl, I'd be in my now crew shirt today. 
Final thing is on the back door, you can't see it because of the archway right now. But if you look up on your way out the door, it simply says this. And th this is the whole mission for every person in now church. Out the door, it simply says this. Know God, make him known. If you're a barista, you can know God and make him known. If you're an insurance adjuster, you can know God and make him known without being religious, without beating people over the head with your Bible. You can go out and turn on the light, flip the switch of God's love to just be who you are. I uh, had a blood test the other day and the, this lady is taking my blood and she said, are you a pastor or something? I said, why do you ask that? She said, I just could tell you just kind of light up with something. And we had talked for two minutes and I didn't mention Jesus. I didn't have now team shirt on, nothing. She just said, I see something in you. Well, that's in all of us. That's not just in me. That's in all of us. People are looking for, listen, other believers are looking for that light to encourage them. But unsaved people, every unsaved person, whether they realize it or not, in doing all the things that they do, they're looking for God. They're looking to connect with God in a real way so they can find out who they are. That is going to happen as you simply embrace that God made you, gave you a unique gift. Know that there are people out there that need it and learn how to release that in those moments where God gives you that power and that strength. Amen? What a tremendous day it is to be able to go for the gold and be reminded what God has called us to do. And today... As we celebrate the favor of God, we want to celebrate a couple other things as we close. Our tech team has been top-notch in the field of Christian television and now live streaming for the past uh, almost 20 years this year. And our team has won two Emmy Awards, one Telly Award, and now our guys are flying all over the country an average of once a month or so helping other churches set up television, live streaming, and technical equipment. Uh, so much so that our technical director uh, and, uh, and, and general manager, Ricky Perenchief, has been invited the past couple years to be a part of writing articles and on the editorial uh, team of Technologies for Worship Magazine, which is a big deal. Well, we just found out this week. Uh, if you want to put that up there, please. This week, Now Church made the cover of Technologies for Worship magazine goes all over the world. I don't know if Fitz knew this yet. We tried to keep the surprise, but our own Ryan Fitzsimmons is up here on his violin from our Christmas presentation. And this is going all over the world, Technologies for Worship magazine. Right there, Now Church's great mic exchange. What a tremendous, give it up for God again. What a great thing. Aren't you glad that Fitz is not ugly? We got our, we got our handsome, our cover model. Ryan Fitz, have you ever been on the cover of a worldwide magazine before? Okay, it's the first time. Uh, we're going to call him Giselle just for today. Anyway, no, it's, uh, <clears throat> anyway, we're just proud of you, Ryan, and the team. What they did, there's a big article inside of it, and uh, you can probably find some more stuff out of online. But what a tremendous honor to, we've, we've been in the magazine many times, but to have the cover, what a great, great blessing. And, uh, and just so thankful for that. Okay, there's, there's the article right there. And uh, what a great, great blessing uh, to see that. Look at that. There's JD in the magazine. There's the Weeby Girls in the magazine. Did you know you were in the magazine, ladies? Isn't that tremendous? Worldwide, churches all over, and their technical crew are going to be looking at this. And we're just so proud of our team. Um, in conclusion, if I can have uh, somebody take down this uh, pulpit right now, this podium. We're going to close with a, a little surprise they've been working on for a few months. Some of you might know about it. Um, oh, yeah, you got to unplug that deal, don't you? Anyway, we uh, saw, as you came in today, some of you were, they were here right on time, saw our intro for the last few years of doing live streaming uh, and our online campus. And we had that, uh, you dropped my iPad? Whoa. It's held there by a magnet. I didn't think it would fall. Anyway, whew, okay. 
the, the reality is that we have this opportunity to present kind of the beginning of our broadcast, beginning of our streaming, kind of who we are. So our guys have been working creatively for the last six months to come up with a way to show Ocala, to show horse country. And um, one of the things they found last year at the NAB convention was an inexpensive drone to fly and do some shots. Many of the shots, I'm told, I haven't seen this yet either, but many of our shots from our new intro uh, will look like they are B-roll footage from something else. The only thing that's B-roll, I'm told, is something of some of the horses racing in some of the, in some of the you know, Kentucky Derby or something. Everything else was taken right here at Grand Oaks, uh, at other places, other undisclosed um, horse farms that have opened the door to us to come. And so I present to you the new intro for our online campus for Now Church. Ocala, Florida, horse capital of the world, where the dawn of a new day brings a fresh opportunity to chase history. A bloodline destined for greatness, groomed from birth, trained to triumph over obstacles. Powerful, graceful, majestic, it's here strength is tested. It's here endurance pushed to the limits. It's here champions are made. A bird's an alley there, hits a bird. A bird's got a nose in front of me, come on to the wire. At the finish, it's going to be dead night. And here it is, the 37 year wait is over. American Burrow is finally the one. American Burrow has won the Triple Crown. Watching these gentle giants ride to victory is truly a thing of beauty. But as a human being, it made me reevaluate. Who am I? What is my purpose? How can I win in this race called life? The journey led me to Now Church. I'll never forget the first time. Hands lifted high, voices raised, a real encounter with Jesus Christ, an expression of love, an atmosphere of faith, a passion for others, all ages, all colors together as one for a cause greater than ourselves, serving our neighbors and reaching our world, to know God and make Him known. It didn't take long to realize this is where I belong. people, reaching a now generation, with a now sound, and a now word. Come on, give it up for Now Church, for the team. Tremendous. What a blessing. All the music was composed and, uh, and done in our studio by Pastor Lindsey, Ricky, and Dakota. And we're so proud of those guys. Stand up on your feet, if you will. Isn't it great to stand for something that's bigger than yourself? Isn't it great to be part of the cause of Christ and being a part of discovering who you are, why you're here? There are people beyond these walls. Would you bow your head and close your eyes as we prepare to dismiss you? Father, we thank you for your word today. It's your word that transforms us. It's your word that builds us up and saves us. Holy Spirit, would you come and move strong in behalf of all the people in this room and connecting with us on our online campus? Would you come and reveal Jesus in a deeper way, a stronger way? Move in them. Thank you, Lord, that Ocala is a place where champions are made, where people are transformed into being winners. 
into being victorious. You promise in your word, you always lead us in triumph in Christ Jesus. Even the biggest setbacks can become the biggest platforms when you trust in the Lord with all your heart. If you're here today and you say, Pastor, I need God in my life in a brand new way. I want to know Jesus for myself. I need to break out of this cycle that I've been in. And I need what God has for me. If you're here today before you go, or maybe you're watching an online campus, right where you are, right where you're standing, would you just be honest about it and just lift up your hand for a moment? Just be honest about it. All over this place, just lift up your hand and keep it up just a second and then look and make eye contact with me so you know I've seen you. Hands are going up. God bless you. Hands are going up. God bless you. Is there someone else? God bless you over here. We love you guys so much. God bless you, sir. God's purpose is for you. He loves you just like you are, but he loves you too much to leave you the way you are. He wants to transform you in that love into who he's made you to be. Lord, reveal yourself to everyone whose hearts are open, whose hands are raised. Everybody pray this with me real quick. Just pray this with me. Lord Jesus, help me in my life to live for you. I want to know you. I want to discover everything you have for me. And I want my life to make a positive difference. From this moment, I give you my heart and I ask you to help me to know you and to make you known to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Be ready, by the way, if you're newer to the church or maybe you've been here for years. I challenge you to get ready for March 1st for a class called Decide where you can be taught how to know God in a deeper and stronger way and come into those four weeks, four classes that can transform your life. We love you. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for being here for Vision Sunday 2018. God bless you. Have a great day. We'll see you Wednesday night. Enjoy the Super Bowl. Pray for Trey Burton and the team uh, and your particular team, and we'll see you soon. Be blessed.